<clears throat> it's been a difficult week in Newman House. Why? Because we lost the crib. Meaning a few days ago, I went to where the crib should have been, our beautiful figures that you can see under the altar now. You know there's a happy ending coming. And I couldn't find them. I looked in our lower sacristy, our lower sacristy's back room, the area around the bar, the sacristy's near the bar downstairs, our other cellar. We have a whole range of cellars out the front under the main road. I looked everywhere, in every nook and cranny, in every box, and I couldn't find the crib. And I went into a little panic and I just said to the students, will you please go on a treasure hunt one evening and see if you can find it? And I came up here yesterday to see the crib before the altar. So just joy of joys, they found the crib, not me. Where was it? Well, it was hidden away in one of the cupboards where I had looked, but it was stuffed in a box under the vestments. We have a huge array of ancient vestments and the, the crib and the box was hidden right under so that all I saw was these old chasubles. Just in brackets, if you're interested, this is, um, we're keeping these for the v &A Museum one day. These are the chasubles from the 1970s and the 1980s, glorious, glory days of vestments. And they've all been taken downstairs over many years and put into storage for when they come back into fashion again one day. So there they are, there was the crib, and here is the happy ending. We're celebrating Christmas together, and we've just put the baby Jesus where he should be. So look, just losing a crib and finding it, it just made me think how much a theme being lost is in the Bible. Almost every book of the Bible, there's something about being lost. And I haven't done this. I'd love to do a word search, but just the most obvious one, there in the Garden of Eden, after the fall, that great rupture with, with that relationship, that friendship of Adam and Eve with each other and with their loving father. And God goes into the garden to meet them. So it's not, first of all, that God is pushing them away. They've sinned. God is walking in the garden in the cool of the evening, and he can't find them because they've hidden themselves because of the shame of their nakedness, of their humanity, and of their secret sin. So the lostness of humanity, our searching for God and God searching for us, it's a theme that runs through so much of the Bible. It made me think of this evening, looking for Jesus. And in fact, that is one of the Christmas themes for us this evening, and maybe to take away for the octave, the eight days of Christmas. To think of yourself as someone on a great search to find Jesus. This is Advent, our longing for the Lord. But this is the strangeness that even when he comes, even when he comes in the flesh, heart to heart, face to face, we still sometimes lose him or forget what we have. So yes, for many of us, it's the 10th, 20th, 30th, 40th, 50th, 100th Christmas. But this should still be this wonderful sense of excitement, of longing for the Lord in Advent and of looking for him fervently now. Where can I find the face of Jesus Christ? The face that the shepherds see in our nativity set in the crib here, that they gaze with wonder on the beauty of and the love and the tenderness of Jesus and of Mary and Joseph, that divine light that surrounds the stable at Bethlehem. Where can I find the face of Jesus in my own life? It's partly a spiritual thing. We forget this, but Jesus Christ dwells within our souls. This is the, the theology, our faith in the indwelling of the most holy trinity the father the son and the holy spirit dwell within our souls but how often when we sit or kneel to pray do we forget that 
or our minds and our hearts are so cluttered with other things that we can't see him for the baggage, the boxes, the clutter, the sin. It's about moving this away so we can see him more clearly. And I did think, this is not me trying to be too clever, but there was some, the Lord was saying something to me anyway in where the crib was hidden. It was hidden behind the vestments. Now, I'm not against vestments, okay? I'm not into a, a minimalist church. We should celebrate with great joy the gift of faith, the gift of the church, and glorify the Lord and beautify our liturgy. But just the symbol there that, that Jesus, his divinity and his humanity, was hidden away. And it's not that the church or the vestments or the beauty of the liturgy obscure the Lord, not at all. They reveal him. But he can become obscured because we don't see him. Or we can see everything else, all the external beauty of our faith, of the church, of the liturgy, of our traditions. We can hear the words of our doctrines, all true. I'm not criticizing them. I'm not anti-liturgy, anti-intellectual. All these beautiful and true and good things of our faith. But we can forget that the living face, the heart of Jesus Christ, is at the center of our faith. And Christmas has many meanings, but one of them is remembering that Jesus Christ the eternal son of God, the word made flesh, this little child, this savior, our brother, our savior who died on the, Jesus is at the center of everything. And if we're just looking at the externals and we don't see him, what's happening to our faith? And no wonder sometimes that we feel in the difficult times that it's not giving us life because we've lost touch with the very source of our eternal life. So our search for Jesus, hidden in the box, hidden behind the vestments. But look, let's remember above all that this isn't our search for God. It's God's search for us. This is Christmas. This is the Annunciation of Gabriel searching for Mary and finding her, his joy. This, this is, imagine Gabriel thinking, this is the one, this is the immaculate one who will become the temple, who will become Jesus's home. And then coming to Christmas, not our search for God, but God's search for us, Jesus coming to Mary. And then Mary looking after, nurturing Jesus within her womb, but today, the day of his birth, presenting Jesus to the world, not holding him just for herself. Mary and Joseph, Jesus's family, his beloved, precious family, not holding Jesus to themselves, but presenting him to us and to the world, to the shepherds, to the people of Bethlehem, to the wise men at the Epiphany. And Jesus coming to be with Mary and Joseph, and the shepherds and the wise men, but then coming on a search for us. This is the image of the good shepherd who seeks the lost sheep. Do you hear the word lost again? Bethlehem, it, it's a beautiful icon. The, the manger, the crib, is often very static. It's like a tableau, it's, it feels posed. And, and I love that, I love the harmony and the order that we see in the art and in so many of these beautiful Christmas cards and in the cribs that we have so beautifully prepared in our churches. But it's static, usually. Okay, you go to an Italian crib and it's got a windmill turning around or something. But basically the crib is static. So it betrays something absolutely fundamental, which is the dynamism of Jesus the Good Shepherd longing to be with us, screaming for our attention, the little baby crying, holding his arms out. Mary presenting him to us and him holding his arms out. And you can imagine him, his first steps as a toddler, stumbling to meet someone as toddlers do. 
But this isn't just a little baby wanting to fall into the arms of his mother or his auntie or uncle. This is a little child longing to come like the Good Shepherd to save the world and to meet every human soul. The Good Shepherd walking round Bethlehem and Nazareth with his family as he grows up, coming into adulthood in Jerusalem, beginning his public ministry, and Jesus coming to find us even in our most lostness, in the darkness of sin and the darkness of death. Not that Jesus sinned, but he came to a place of sinners and bore our sins and bore our infirmities and walked with us into the valley of death, which is what the cross behind me that stands over the crib is all about. So it's such a night of joy tonight. I'm happy we found the crib. I'm relieved. Thank you, all of you students, for not giving up. The joy of us finding Jesus and not giving up the search. That's what these next few days are about. It's not just to look at our Christmas cards and eat, drink our mulled wine, although we can have a bottle of champagne after mass tonight. It's much more than that. It's us searching for Jesus. But above all, it's Jesus searching for us and knowing that we have been found. I was lost and now I have been found. That's the whole Christian faith and it's the beautiful message of Christmas and of Bethlehem and of the crib.